last night I had a dream and I had a dream that I was preaching a sermon called Leadership Gold. And I was telling people how I took this organization from a little organization to a big one. And one of the biggest things that I try to teach my daughter all the time, how many, what did I tell you today? You have to say no. No! All the time. No. I mean, what about this business opportunity? No. No. Uh, is that graphic cool? Nope. It could be better. What about that video? Nope. But the temptation is to tell everybody because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Uh, it's okay. It's close enough. No, if you're going to be great, you got to push it. Business is business. Leadership Gold is a series. Come on, give it up for Jesus today. Earth City, Weldon Springs, Ferguson, Sunset. Come on, Florida. You can make more noise than that. And really, around the world. No. When you were little, how many of y'all thought your name was no? It's like, no, 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 no. I said no. You, no, you can't have candy and cake for breakfast. Anybody heard that? No, just because, you know, they're going out to play and the street doesn't mean you can. No. But we saw no is something as a restrictive force, something that was holding us back. When in reality, probably we were saved from some trouble because your mama most likely because your dad wasn't paying attention, said no. Come on, shout no. So no. So I want you to think of the word no as a protective shield, something that keeps you from making a greater mistake. I'm primarily talking to business people over the next four weeks in this series, but everybody here is a leader. And I believe even if you're being led by somebody above you, which I think we all are to some degree, Certainly God is leading you. If you own a huge corporation, there are people at our church that employ hundreds and hundreds of people and there's uh, thousands of people that are just employed by people. But I want you to raise up your leadership lead. I even hear some women say, you know, I'm just a stay-at-home mom or I'm just a stay-at-home dad. I mean, that's the most phenomenal place to lead in the world. Give it up for all those people that are leading well at home. So why are we afraid to say the word no? One of the reasons why we're afraid to say the words no is because we really all cannot stand to not have affirmation. We want to know, man, that everybody affirms us. Raise your hand if you like to be affirmed. Now, this is going to be different for every person at every campus because everybody has a different personality. Austin really cares what I think. Ashton could care less what I think. She does not have any act of compassion. Uh, you know, I, well, she might be watching. She's in LA today, but uh, she's going to pick up my nursing home. I didn't think this all the way through. So help me with this. Then we want acceptance and we want approval. So these three A's really hold us back. We're afraid to say no because what, what, what if they're, they don't affirm us? What if they don't accept us? What if they say bad things about us? And it fosters insecurity in us. We don't need to be afraid to say no. Now, one of the reasons why it's important to say no, especially in business, is because if you don't say no, then something greater, you, this might be good, but something greater will come along and you won't be able to say yes to that because you didn't say no to this. So no is not bad. In fact, no, I think most of the time comes out of your spirit. Number one, it's really cool at Faith Church because we teach a lot of business people how to go to the next level with a good business partner, and that's the Holy Spirit, because he knows when the markets are up, he knows when they're going down, he knows everything. You talk about insider trading, come on somebody, help me right now. This guy's got it going on. And so God wants us to listen to that, no, no. Everybody shout it again, no. And, but here's the deal, in business, listen, it's a still small voice. I watch so many entrepreneurs ruin their lives because they're always chasing the next thing. I'm going to make a bunch of money with this, huh? and then bam, it didn't work out. I'm going to make a bunch of money with that, and then I'm going to make a bunch of money with this. When really, the Bible says that the faithful person shall abound in blessing. So find out what God wants you to do, Mr. or Mrs. Entrepreneur. Find that, stick with that, because it's going to be hard as heck. It is hard to start a business. It is hard to get it. In church planners that are watching me, 80% of all churches fail in the first year. 80. 8 zero. 80 percent fail in the first year. It's very hard. But guess what? I found out you, if you just are called and you continue on the path, you can do great things. And a lot of you are watching in balconies right now. The, you know, 
30,000 uh, square, square foot building, uh, Earth City, what, 150,000 square feet, 160, Sunset Hills, hundreds of, uh, basically $100 million worth of assets that came out of a guy from a trailer who was eating air bologna because guess what? I said no to that so I could say yes to this and we're just getting started, gang, because we're about to have five years, come on somebody, of grace and favor. Shout it, five years of grace and favor. But you gotta listen to that no. No matter what happens, listen to the no. I was interviewing a guy uh, to be a high level ranking member of our church. He would be set on the, you got the leadership team and there's about 20 of those people on a Monday. I'll meet with them tomorrow. I'll be in Florida. But I straight, for years, we, we just, we use Zoom before everybody else is using Zoom. And uh, there, then there's the DLT team, which just is about three or four people. And I was interviewing a guy about a, a week or two ago. He said, I, by the way, I don't hire people, don't fire people. But on that level, I interviewed the people. And so I interviewed the guy and I liked the guy. He had all the right cred, uh, uh, credentials. He had all the right experience. But there was something in me just a little scratching. A little scratching. And I told my chief of staff, I said, hey, check him out a little bit deeper. And then he kind of checked him out and he, he kind of had the same scratching too. And there's nothing wrong with the guy. And then on Thursday of this week, all of a sudden I woke up and I heard, no. It wasn't that that guy was bad. He's just not my guy. By the way, girls, this will help you when you're picking out the right man. When you hear no, come on, shout no. So when the guy asks you, you know, can I have your number? You're like, my number is no. My name is no. No to the no to the no, no, no. That's a Megan Trainer song, by the way. No. You can always say yes. Quit apologizing for saying no. I had an executive team member at our organization for years, and this person was always afraid to say no. But when we, when we were offered drugs, we're supposed to say no. Come on, shout it. No. Y'all are scaring me. Drugs no. is say no. And then, of course, now all the kids are eating, you know, Tide Pods. But no, that's a big drug thing. I don't know if you guys knew that. I didn't know that until they told me, like, a lot of kids are dying from Tide Pots. Uh, I just wish my kids would do the laundry. How about you? <laughs> now, just say yes or no. This is the Bible. Anything else you say comes from the evil one, Matthew 5, 37. Learn this. The, the Bible says just say yes or no. So don't be apologizing for saying no. And don't apologize that you said Yes. I say yes as a corporate leader oftentimes to things that other people on my organizational team say, I don't think you're doing the right thing. And I believe there's safety in a multitude of counselor, but there's something about the key man. In fact, uh, the, uh, they have key man life insurance on me. In other words, they come draw blood on me about every two months at my house. Uh, actually, I like the lady here in Florida. She comes, we know each other. She's like, how you doing, PD? What's up? She draws my blood and they check me to make sure there's nothing wrong with me. Because when I borrowed a million dollars for the first time, I couldn't sleep at night. When I borrowed $10 million, the bank couldn't sleep at night. Come on, help me. <laughs> so they put key man life insurance on me. So that means that I must know something other people don't know. Why? Because when God put you in charge of that business, he made you an intuitive leader. He gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit. So don't apologize for saying no, but don't apologize for saying yes. When you know it's right, honey, go for it. Give God praise today. Come on, our city, sunset. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And this, this scripture in Revelations, it says, so I advise you to buy gold, the series is called Leadership Gold, that has been purified by fire, then you will be rich, also by white garments, talking about purity, keep yourself pure, uh, from, from me so, so you will not be, be shamed by your nakedness. So many people right now, during COVID, they're naked. As a, what I mean by that is they're like running in fear. Should I cover my face? Well, that's up to you. But I watch people like wear a double mask alone in a car. It confuses me. You're alone. Are you going to give yourself COVID? But they, they sit there and the world is naked because they're operating in fear. But Faith Church has said, God has not given us a spirit of fear. We go to church. Our garments are white. We have the word of God, which is purifying us. And we're going to make more money by accident than most people make on purpose. Give God praise today in the house. Now let's talk about, I know I'm really ramming and jamming on you today, but raise your hand if it's helping you so far. I want to talk a minute about the law of selectivity. The law of selectivity. In fact, I want to cue up uh, my buddy uh, uh, Ted Brower's video, because I'm going to play that next. The law of selectivity. You have to be selective. 
when I was talking to my daughter that day, we were in Florida and we were seeing approvals come back from our graphics team about t-shirts. When most people make t-shirts at our church or graphics or whatever, um, they, they'll sell a few. I mean, a few people like them. But when Ashton, I learned a couple years ago that Ashton has a whole big old case of the I'm really cool. Not that she even thinks she's cool. She just woke up cool. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know where she got it from. Because she didn't get it from me because I still got mine. Come on, somebody help me. <laughs> but she's just cool. So when, when Ashton designs the graphics or Ashton designs the gear, it just sells out immediately. She's like Kanye. And then if anybody else does it, we just have loads of it. So Ashton was driving down the road and she said, that's good enough. And they were getting ready to order um, 20, I think $25,000 worth of shirts. How many of y'all, that, that's a lot of shirts, right? And I said, are you sure you can sell $25,000 worth of shirts? She said, I don't know. I don't feel that great about it. I go, you, have, you don't feel that great. You got to tell that person who's a good person, you're not seeing my vision. Again, you've got to say no. So that's actually where part of this message was inspired. I shot that video that I just showed you in uh, Boca Raton, Florida, driving down the road. And I said, no, the graphic is not what you want. No, the video is not what you want. No, the guy is not what you want. No. Now you can't also think you're a 10. Come on, let's stop, stop here for a minute. I watch a lot of girls waiting on Mr. Right. It's like, if he's a good guy and you know, he doesn't have a six pack, but he's got like a, 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 like a keg. That guy might actually go to work, have a job and he loves carbs when he gets home. That might be a good guy. If the guy's like, ah, I'm sexy and I know it. That guy can't love you because he's doing love with himself. Even the camera lady, all the campuses that hear the lit cameras lady, like, hey, man. If your camera's shaking, it's because of that lady. The law of selectivity. Now, there's a church member of our church. He's uh, worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and he goes to our church online in Orlando. So he's a pretty smart dude, and he taught me a lot about business years ago. And I asked Ted, Ted, will you send me a little video? Uh, one of my favorite topics he talks about. Check this out. that I really thought about. And he said that opportunity will always shy away from need. If you're really in a situation where you're desperate and you try to get somebody to get involved with you from a business standpoint, they're gonna avoid you. They're not gonna to wanna to be around you. Always bring something to the table. Don't ever bring desperation with you because that simply drives people away. They'll never give you the opportunity that the Lord may have for you. All right, opportunity shies away from need. Let's all shout that together. Opportunity shies away from need. One more time, all campuses loudly. What? Opportunity shines. So people go, hey, I really need a job bad. I really need a job bad. Will you hire me? Ah, wrong approach. Hey, I got four kids and a dog. I need a man really bad. I need a rent. Will you take me on at a date? Come on, somebody. No, no, no. You got to chill, stand aloof. The law of selectivity means that you're interviewing them. So in a job interview, the way, uh, I, I've noticed this too, by the way, business people, this will help you. It's not my notes, but it'll help you. I've noticed that the people who interview really, really well, don't hire them. Like I was like, man, gosh, that's the best interview I ever had. They interview so well. Then somebody else is terrible at an interview. And I think, gosh, they are horrible. Come to find out the person that sucks at an interview has only been on one interview and they stayed at a job. The professional interview person has been at a new job every year and a half. So if they're really good at interviewing, chances are you don't want them. You want good old faithful person like, you know what? I'm gonna stick with it till it gets there. I'm gonna be, got quiet in here because there's a lot of <laughs> professional interviewers apparently. Check this out. In Matthew 14, 22, this is leadership gold. Jesus was a phenomenal, is a phenomenal leader. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. I underlined that because Jesus made the disciples. In every organization, you have to make people do it. Even at home, you have to make your kids take out the trash. Make your, you didn't put a bag back in it? You gotta go back and put a bag in it. You walk around turning all the lights off. You gotta make them turn off the lights because they don't pay the bills. This doesn't change in corporate leadership. Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. One leader has to have a vision. The boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Notice in every organization, you've got the crowd, then you've got Jesus had the 12, and then Jesus had the three. So you got your closest DLT team and they're thinking at a different level. They're breathing different oxygen. 
In fact, I sent an email this morning when I woke up because I thought about a lot in the middle of the night and it took three DLT executives, like one guy ran Goodwill. He knows a little bit about multi-site. Joe, he's our chief of staff. And I transferred all that was in my brain that I thought about in the middle of the night to those guys. And then they had to regurgitate back to me a list of things that would be taken care of because I had too many tabs open in my mind. So I have, as organizationally, I've set up different groups. I got a top tier group and a middle group. They're all great, but then you dismiss the crowd. Some conversations you just can't have with everybody. It got quiet up in here today. I hope you're just listening. You like it when I do that. Where's the organ at, preacher? This is how we get the, pay the organ guy. There he is. <laughs> but this is how we pay the organ guy. After he had dismissed them, check it out, Jesus, another leadership goal, he went up on the mountaintop by himself to pray. It's very important to get alone and think. Get alone and think. Put your airplane mode on, your phone, because if not, you'd be like, boom. <laughs> You never can think anymore. You get alone with God and God will speak to you when you're alone. If Jesus needed to get alone with God, how many of y'all know you need to get alone with Jesus? Look at your neighbor and say, you need to get alone with Jesus. Some of you are like, you need to get alone with Jesus. And the boat was already a considerable distance to the land, but it was buffeted by the waves, buffeted by the waves. It's tough, buffeted in business. How am I gonna start it? How am I gonna pay the bills? I mean, oh my gosh because the wind was against them. During COVID, the wind is against you, but God's wind of favor is for you. And if you talk to God, he will put you at the right place at the right time. And we're seeing people win like crazy at our church. In fact, I'm gonna show you a video in a minute from a church member in St. Louis named Ryan Jaycox. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. How many of y'all would get scared too if you saw a dude walking on the water in the middle of the night? Let's try it again. Raise your hand, all campuses. Walking on the lake is terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Fear, false evidence appearing real, is one of the biggest deterrents from you doing something courageous. But Jesus immediately said to them, he didn't wait a long time. When they were afraid, he immediately said to them, take courage, take courage. It, It is... It, 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 it is, it's me. Don't be afraid. You have to tell yourself many times, stop being afraid. And when you are afraid, you just do it afraid. First time I signed my name to a million dollars, I was scared. So I signed my name to $3 million, I was scared. Signed my name to $6 million, I was scared. Signed my name to $10 million, I was scared. Everything I've ever done, keep the churches in St. Louis. Think about it right now at Earth City. 177,000 cars driving by that building a day. And, and, and Sunset Hills, $37 million campus, sitting there on the highway, all these campuses. And I have the audacity to say, I'm also going to pastor in Florida. What are all the people in St. Louis gonna think? My pastor also pastors there. So there was a leadership thing in me saying, you gotta do it because people far from Jesus need a Holy Ghost church in Florida too. But fear was holding me back. But faith said, step out. Somebody ought to shout, amen. Do it afraid. He said, come, leadership goal. Then Peter got down out of the boat. Then Peter got, get down. You gotta get down. You gotta get down out of the boat. God didn't make Peter do it. Who got out of the boat? Come on, shout it loud, all campuses. Who got out of the boat? Peter got out of the boat and walked on water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, I can't do anything good after COVID. He saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. Number one, you don't begin to sink when you get in the water. How many of y'all know you go down like a clown with a frown? I'm trying to make up more rhymes, but it's early. He saw the wind. Don't look at the wind. Have wisdom about the wind. Know what to do, when to do it. Remember Kenny Rogers said this, the great patron saint. He said, you got to know when to hold them. Sing it with me, country music. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away in. You never count your money. <laughs> your guys did good. Come on, give yourself a hand. Oh, God, I can't believe it. Like, a lot of you guys do the words, but you're like, I'll never see country music. I'll die first. I like rap. You know what happens when you mix, you know, country and rap? You get crap. Come on, somebody help me. All right. <laughs> All right, back to the sermon. Immediately, Jesus reached out a hand and caught him and said, oh, you have a little faith. 
He said, why did you doubt? I don't think Jesus said, oh, you have a little faith. Why did you doubt? I know Jesus says not the way we respond. He just said, hey, man, oh, you have a little faith. Why did you doubt? You know I would do this. I said I would do it. Why'd you doubt? And what I have to say to you at all of our faith church campuses and our online campuses, which is just as real. In fact, people came in from all across America to be baptized at the tanks this weekend from, that, that legitimately call faith church their home. Jesus is looking at you and say, don't doubt in the dark what God said to you in the light. Jesus has got this. And if you believe you got five years of grace and favor, put a giant amen on that right now. And I love it. It says, after he fell, when they, Jesus is with you, when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Tough times never last. COVID doesn't last. Trust me, the mask is going to go. They're going to give you guys all your shots and you're going to go, I'm better now. I feel great. I'm happy again. They said we could roam about the cabin, right? But Jesus is with you. I can always tell for the people that believe the whole thing. But anyway, I'll get out of here. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. Notice there's two different types of leader. You got the guy that got out of the boat. Everybody shout, that's me. Shout it again like you had breakfast. Why? And then you got the people that were in the boat. But the people that were in the boat were inspired by what you did. I remember when I bought the Earth City campus and we had the church in Fenton and we'd been there my whole life. So like my dad had pastored that church for like 20 years. And so we had 180 people when, when we started and, and it was bringing in about $800,000 a year, which is almost enough to pay the bills and, it was really run down, and within two years, we grew up from 200 to 2,000. In fact, Jeff Duncan, his wife there from Duncan Financial, they were some of the first members that came, and Dr. Eric. And so we just started growing like crazy. We went from one service to eight services in this building, and we needed a bigger building. And uh, God led me to get out of the boat and go by the Earth City campus. And when I went to buy it, I was scared. But, but what was neat is when I did it, a lot of the people were scared. What are you thinking? We've done this our whole life. Where are you going? Are, are, are you leaving our, our, our campus here? And I'm like, no, it's like 20 minute drive. Like I can do this and that. Trust me, there's a thing called a car. And so we did it. But what was really cool is the people that gave me the biggest booze. By the way, the, the, the loudest booze come from the cheapest seats in your life. And so... Um, they actually said once I got in, they go, man, this is exciting. Wow, look what we did. I'm like, we? You were griping the whole time. <laughs> My point is, is when you get out of the boat, you'll cause other people to worship God and they will be inspired by what you do and what Jesus helps you do because he is the lead guy. Give God praise today in his house. I want to go to this video by Ryan Jaycox. He, he gives us, in fact, at our, um, on, our, on our, uh, the app, I've downloaded Jeff's and all these different people's, uh, like a lot of people at our church are really successful business people and great communicators. So for the next four weeks, I'm playing snippets of wisdom from people at our church. And we've actually loaded all of those for the business people that are super hungry. It's already on the Faith Church app. So if you go there, you can watch all these. Check out Ryan's story. Hey guys, Ryan Jaycox here. If I could give one piece of advice that I wish I knew back when I started in business, it's what Warren Buffett said. He said the difference between successful people and very successful people is very successful people say no to almost everything. But in business, especially when you're getting started, you say yes to everything. What does this do? It divides your time, it divides your talents. I call it focusing on the one thing. If you to put all your focus, time, and attention on that, it would have been massively successful. Instead, you have a bunch of semi-successful job projects. So I'm gonna tell you right now, the number one thing, number one takeaway that you can do is focus all your time and energy on the one thing. Come on, give it up for Ryan. Come on, you can do better than that. So Ryan, Ryan had several different businesses and during COVID, he believed that the four years of Jubilee was his. And so right at the beginning of COVID, he started another business. He said yes to that. And every month during COVID, and even now, this new business that they started brings in $1 million per month. I'm excited about it because he's a tither. I'm also excited because he bought a house tomorrow right here in, in Florida as well. So now I want to talk about this. Don't play the comparison game. Well, God never gave me a million dollars a month. You have to be faithful over the little. God will make you ruler over the much. Ryan's been doing it a long time. He looks very young because he, uh, he, you know, he just, he's just one of those guys that doesn't eat any sugar. I don't know how he does that. But he's very healthy, but he's got a lot of wisdom, 
and he tithed not only off of his salary. Here's what a lot of business people do. They're like, hey, I only make this amount. You know what you make. You're in charge of the corporation. So his corporation, he said, I want God to be a part of my business. So he tithes off the business. But never ever, you'll get yourself depressed if you, if you play the comparison game because your dream it may be bigger than theirs, it may be smaller than theirs, but no matter what, don't play that. You know, here, how many of y'all think dogs like bones? Say yes if you do. Dogs do like bones, but they love steak. They settle for bones. So I want to encourage you, don't settle in your marriage, don't sell in your business. Just be saying, hey, look, I want the whole thing. How do you do that? Here's how you do it in our city. You change your habits that don't align with your dreams. So if you've got habits right now, like, hey, I love to Netflix and chill. There's nothing wrong with what's watching a lot of television, a little television, but watching a lot of television actually kills your vision because all you're doing is listening to the vision that they're telling you instead of creating with your mind's eye, being the cultural architect of what you want. That's why I suggested earlier that you get alone, turn the airplane mode off and dream about where you're going to go. I still dream about putting our logo on the moon somehow, some way. Could it say faithchurch.com on the moon? How would we do that? And then if you dream about that, then you'll actually show up having your logo all over the world and hundreds of millions of people are affected by our ministry because little dreams create little passion. Big dreams allow you to engage and say, I'm willing to change my habit and I will say no to this because I want to say yes to that. I say no to hot fudge cake, not because I want to be an underwear model. I'm 51 years old. I say no to that so I have the energy to do what God called me to do. So I have to say no to that so I can say yes to this. Not one medication at all at 51. I'm not on anything except vitamins, nutrition, good thoughts, water, vitamins, and so on. So change your habits. Everybody shout, change your habits. Create a discipline of execution. Train, the, this is important, as you grow your organization, train the people under you to be leaders. If you just train followers, there is no future. When I first started the church, I made this mistake. I trained followers. My leaders that I trained, I trained them to train followers. Here's what we do, here's how we do it. And there is some repetition there that's good, but speak into the leader of people. I speak into my daughter, speak into my son, speak into my sons of the faith because I want them to develop execution. Execution means get it done. If you're in a meeting and you're like, I'm gonna write that down, I'm gonna email it later. Bring your laptop and while somebody's talking, you go, hey, I'm gonna execute right now. I'm gonna send that email right now because why put off 10 minutes from now what you could do right now? Execution is a big one. Now, the next one is fear. It's the worst of the enemies can be effectively cured by forced repetition of acts of courage. Fear. Real quick, I'm gonna go a couple minutes long if you don't mind. Raise your hand if you don't mind. I can't see you at other campuses, but I can't imagine you disrespecting your pastor and not raising your hand. So I just know you love me. Try it one more time so the other people know what the right answer is yes. So we went to New Zealand. We were uh, preaching over in Australia. We popped to New Zealand and I heard about, this is the first place that you could bungee jump back in the day. First place you ever jump, bungee jump off this really cool bridge in this most amazing place. And I told my, my kids and my wife, I'm gonna jump. Uh, who wants to jump with me? And MJ's like, yeah. And Austin's like, no. And Ash is like, no. And Nicole's like, no. And you're not either. I'm gonna call the bank. <laughs> Right? You can't jump on that. So she started reading all the stuff online and trying to scare me before bed. And she poured up so much in me that I almost thought about not doing it. Then I looked at her before bed and I go, I don't care what you read. I'm in New Zealand. I'm jumping off the bridge. And I'm so insured. Either way, you win. <laughs> so the next morning, we got up to go jump off the bridge and you could tell that Nicole really wanted to jump off the bridge and MJ's like, let's go. I got up on the bridge, by the way, and I looked down, I'm like, whoa, that is a long way. And they put tape around you and rope around you. It's kind of primitive and it doesn't look that sophisticated. And then I'm gonna jump off the bridge? And my, 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 my daughter asked me, she said, uh, how, how can you do this? I said, the reason why I can do this is because I'm just going to the zone. This is so key. I can go to the zone. I want to say it again. Please listen to me. Any day of the week, I can go to a zone where I flip a switch that I know if I live, I live. If I die, I die. I'm going to do it. And then I jumped and I didn't go, ah! I want to do it one more time. Ah! I went, I believe I can fly. And if 
felt good. And guess what? You might be wondering, I lived. And then meanwhile, Nicole was looking, this would look so cool on the Nicole Craig show. I just got to do it. And so she went in and there was a picture of a 99 year old woman who had jumped off the bridge and she lived. And Nicole's like, if she can do it, I can do it. And Nicole jumped off and went, ah! But the fact is the fear can be overcome by force repetition. The more fearful things you do, the more faith that grows in your heart, the more you can win because the greater one is on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you. Come on, somebody, that he through the organ that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm blessed going in and blessed. Okay, that's good. I just wanted to make sure everybody felt like they, they went to church. Now my time is up, I'm 52 seconds over, but again, can I have your permission to go two minutes over? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, four, that's a long time. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and he heard my cry, Psalms 40, verse one. Important, it, it doesn't happen overnight, it's patient. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit. You might be there right now in COVID. Like, oh my gosh, I'm never coming out of this. He set my feet upon the rock and established my steps, Psalms 40, verse two. Another great one, he has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and respect is what that word actually translated me, and will trust in the Lord. Good scriptures, right? Here's a couple things. Wait on the Lord God. Courage and strength shall be in your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There's so many scriptures that'll take you higher and higher. Last couple of quotes I want to give you that I made up. Never question who or what God removes from your life. When every level comes with a new devil, but every level you're always surprised, if you're like me and I'm very loyal, who can't go with you? If they can't, write this down, if they can't grow with you, they can't go with you. So they have to grow. And if they don't grow and you can't force people to grow, listen to these podcasts, it'll, it'll be good. Read these books, it'll be good. Because a lot of people are what I call, and remember when, a minute ago we hit church, ah, ah. I'm still saved, but I call them salary suckers. They will just suck salaries out of your organization and you have to be intuitive to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Love people, talk to people, do annual reviews with people, do 90 day performance plans with people. But if they don't put out, they gotta get out because only so much money comes in. And if more money's going out than is coming in, we can't stay in business and do what God called us to do. You can't become who you wanna be because you're too attached to who you've been. It's not who I am. That's not what I've done. Come on, roll palms. Go with me on this. So it, it, you got to remember that God takes you from glory to glory, faith to faith, victory to victory. And he's always reinventing you. Never let people say, well, I remember back when you and I were, you know, back in the day, you did, who do you think you are? You need to break out that song. I know who I am. I know who I am. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it. I know who I am. I am yours. I am yours. Come on, go with me now. And then the other people will be like, I don't know. You think you're all that. No, I don't. I just have a call on my life because the world has never been more screwed up than it is right now. People are confused. I mean, from uh, who am I? What am I? There's just so much confusion. How many of y'all think you need some smart, trained, Holy Ghost people to step in? Come on, say amen to that make a difference. Most people, I'm almost done. Most people have achieved their greatest success just one step beyond their greatest failure. Wow. Have I failed? Oh my gosh, I failed a lot. If you haven't failed, you haven't tried. You got to just do it and you fail. I mean, how many times are you going to give yourself an opportunity to fail? As many times, I have a grandson, he's at home right now and uh, he doesn't walk at all. He doesn't talk at all. He's starting to communicate a little bit. Ah! He does different cues, but he doesn't do much. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to look at him tomorrow and say, you know what, Austin, set up a meeting with me and Liam. <laughs> Liam, I want to talk to you, bro. I mean, you're not really, you've been here, you've been on the team for four months. And like, we got we to gotta bring something to the table, buddy. It's just you gripe all the time. You're messing in your pants all the time. All you want to do is eat all the time. You are a sucker, man. And if you don't believe me, ask your mama. You, no. And when he goes to walk, I'm not going to go. You got three days to learn how to walk. We're going to give him as much time as he needs to walk. In fact, I never want him to walk because I want to carry him the rest of my life. <laughs> give yourself a break, okay? Give yourself a break. Everyone stand with me. First of all, 
raise your hand if you have enjoyed today's sermon online. I want, I want you to talk to me, share it on Facebook like crazy. Obviously, you can go screenshot that on your screen and get a hold of all of this content today and all the videos. That, that guy, Dr. Ted Brower, he's spoken with every living president up until uh, 2015, I think. Stage Zig Ziglar, Peter Lowe, watches our sermons every week, or worships. He and his wife, Sharon, they live in, uh, in, in Arbondale, Florida. And he, all his content's on there. All these things that God's doing with the people at our church. Next week, you don't want to miss one of our great members who employs hundreds of people in St. Louis and lives in Arizona, tunes in online. He, he's got some bonus stuff. Some of the business women in our church are going to share a lot. Nicole's got a couple of clips. So get a hold of that and study it. Here's what I would challenge you to do as we're wrapping this up. Over the next four Sundays, there's only three of them left now. Over the next three weeks, I would not miss one class because what I'm sharing with you will take your organization to the next level. If you miss one, it shows a lack of discipline in your life. It really, really does. I didn't want to get up and work out today. I don't say this to impress you, but I say this to impress upon you. I can drop down right here, right now. Don't have time, but I can prove it to you and nail out 100 push-ups, no problem, right in front of you. And everybody, yeah, 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 yeah. But guess what? It's because every day I do the push-ups. Every day I work out. Why? Because I don't want to look like everybody else. I don't want to feel like everybody else. I don't want to think like everybody else because I'm going to do what God called me to do. And I want to push you to the max and say, you know what? Five years of grace and favor is mine. God has got something good for me. And the devil's no is not going to compare to God's yes. And COVID financial setback. Spit on all that stuff. That has nothing to do with you. You've already been vaccinated by the blood of Jesus who hung, bled, and died 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary for you. And I'm telling you what, let your yes be yes and your no be no in Jesus' name.